Well, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another 2-Bit Circuit Foundation live stream. I am Michael, and we are here today with a really cool project. It's one that we have done already, but the difference is today from the other one, we actually have our kit set up from 2-Bit Circuit Foundation. So like the other projects that we've been showcasing, this is our 2-Bit Circuit Foundation uh, kits, and they are packaged with our projects that are linked and QR coded to our playbooks that are online. So you can take these with you on the go, anywhere you go, whether you're learning at home, whether you're in the classroom, the park, wherever you are, these kits have hopefully all the materials that you need to build this project. And I say hopefully because we are testing these out, and if anything comes up in my experience today, we will be sure to add those modifications to the kits before they come to you. So we have the Mousetrap Car Kit today, and we are going to build that project. So let's go ahead and get started and open up and see what is in our Mystery Vans box today. So I'm going to flip it over this way so I can see alongside you. Ta-da! And what do we have inside here? Another set of materials from our warehouse, which is really awesome. I love the warehouse materials and all the things that you can do with them. The more and more you do projects with them, you will recognize the materials and always find new creative ways to do something with them. So what I have in my hand, the first material that I picked out here was a cone, a fabric cone, and this one is plastic. I know we have some cardboard ones as well, but in our kit for the mousetrap, we have a plastic cone. That's a really awesome material there. We have two large straws that I see at the top here. These are normal plastic straws, but they are oversized. Interesting, interesting. Trying to think as I'm doing this project, what I can do with these straws as I, my brain is working already. We have a block of wood in here as well. Nothing special about it. It's a good sized piece of wood here. And rectangular. Cool. Maybe this could work as a car body or something. Who knows? We have two smaller pieces of wood. These are blinds, it looks like, like the vertical blind shades. Cool. Maybe these work, could work for bodies or something else as well. Put those to the side. So I, I'm actually going to do something interesting as I'm pulling these material now. I'm going to organize the materials in what my initial idea is of how they may or may not be used, right? So I pulled out the cone here. I pulled out this block of wood and these two thin pieces of wood, vertical blinds here. And I'm going to group these together as a similar style material. It doesn't mean they have to be used that way, but I feel they're very similar in maybe their purpose in this kit. And that is as a body, all right? <clears throat> then I have these two straws here. And I, I don't think these could be used as bodies, but maybe they could be. Maybe there's a way you could cut and manufacture them. So this is kind of in the middle. I had another idea, but I don't want to share that one quite yet. Um, we have our plastic chips, another rectangular set here. They're, they have a variety of colors and thicknesses to them. And there are three of those. Maybe these are some sort of body component or some other thing. I'll put that in the middle next to my straws. And I don't know what the heck they're for yet. And move on to the other contents of my kit. So I see a bunch of round disc looking things. 
<clears throat> Got four of these. They're like a, a cardboard top, maybe to like an ice cream lid or something. That's pretty cool. They do have little holes poked in on one side, two side. On this side, they have two holes. On the other side in here, there's four holes, like you would expect on a die, the two holes. I'm wondering if this is like a lid for like a live creature or something, like a bug, right? Like if you, you go fishing like I do and you get live bait, you have holes in there so the bugs can't get out, but you could have oxygen flow, airflow. Okay. <clears throat> we have a couple other materials in here. We have another set of disc looking lids. These have holes drilled into them. All five, one, two, three, four, five, have dr holes drilled into them. So I'm gonna put these in a category together. And this category I'm gonna call wheels because I think those are for wheels. And then we have a Petri dish, two, two Petri dish top lids here. It's not one complete Petri dish, but that's okay, because these are actually the same diameter. Cool. I think these are wheels, too. So those are my wheel pile. My, my surface is getting crowded here. Oh, look, we have a, another one, actually, as well. So we have two, four, six of these plastic tops. Cool. <clears throat> we have string in the kit. String is always useful when you're doing a mouse trap car. We have some rubber bands in here. Rubber bands are always good for the, the mouse trap car as well. These make good tires for your wheels, or they might be able to use to help launch or tie the mouse trap. I don't know. Bunch of cool things there. What would a mouse trap car be without a mouse trap? So we have a mouse trap in the kit. have three wood sticks in here. So they're gonna, I think, come in handy as well. Three wood sticks, like a dowel. It's like a different shape on one side, that's okay. I wanna be very careful with these and I'm gonna sh set them inside the Petri dish right here so I don't lose them. We have one, two, three, four, four, push pins. So just be very careful with those because those can poke you. So be careful. And then we have some paper clips. We have four paper clips in here. All right. That is all the contents of our kit. Our kit is empty. So you see you have all the materials that I think you would need to get a mousetrap car built. Except for the tools, right? You need tape, you might need glue, you need some scissors. So I have all of that stuff here. I don't know which tape I'm going to need yet. And then I have my hot glue gun just hanging off camera here. All right. So when we build a mousetrap car, there's a lot of things you have to consider in there. A lot of forces and energy and motion. And if it's your very first time building a mousetrap car, you may need to do a little bit of work with simple machines, like tr trying to fi figure out the wheel and axle system, right? How wheels and axles work and how they turn. You might need to figure out lever arms and how you can change a force by changing the length of the force applied, right? So if you have a shaft and you apply a force depending on the length of that lever, you're gonna change some characteristics about it. And then obviously you have the design challenge of building a working car. Now that, that could vary in different ways depending on the type of assignment you as an educator, parent, or even a student want to do. There's some projects where you could build a mousetrap car and make it go up a hill. And the characteristics of designing that style car is going to vary from if you have a car going on a flat surface and trying to see how far you can make it go. So all those things are going to depend on the assignment at hand that you're given. But I'm just today going to build a simple generic car. Excuse me, I got a little bit of water there. 
All right, so I'm going to build a simple generic car. I'll give you some different ideas on different things you could do to your car, I guess, as you're building. Uh, I have a design in my head that I like to do. Um, so I'm going to do that one. One thing real quick, a, a block is pretty cool to use. Like you could shape this block if you want. You could sand it down, cut it, kind of like the old Pinewood Derby cars like I used to do when I was little. You could shape it, style the, the shape as however you want. You could even drill holes through here for your axles, right? Um, and that that is going to determine your motion in your car, right? If you drill holes through here, you have a lot of material that that axle is going through. So that might cause a little rubbing and friction and stuff. So if you're going to go that route and use this block and you're going to drill holes through the side there, maybe those straws could come in handy, right? Because plastic, this plastic doesn't have as much um, surface friction, right, as like the block of wood does. It's easier to slip and slide along the straw than it is along the wood surface. So maybe you drilled a hole through there and put the plastic straw in there as a lining to reduce friction. Uh, something else you could do with that is you put a little bit of water and soap in there, and that'll that'll increase uh, or decrease, I'm sorry, friction a little bit. So maybe that's something you could do with this block of wood. That takes a little bit more time, shaping, design, a little bit more tools if you have, right? So you could do that. You could use the, the block of wood, and you could actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the straws you can cut and glue to the bottom here, and then create the hole for your axle to travel through, right? So the axle would go through there and travel, something you could do. You could try to cut, cut little pieces of the straw off, and you can put them on there as well to make it, right? I'm just brainstorming different things you could do with this. Something you could do with the, the, the block of wood. I'm not gonna use a block of wood for my car today, couple reasons. I don't wanna do all the can sanding and cutting and stuff like that. I also am feeling this in my hand and I, it's kind of massive, right? So if I have a massive car, it's gonna be harder to get that car to move based on Newton's laws, okay? The cone, that would be a cool race car shape too, right? Like maybe I made like a, an angled car like that. I'm thinking like this on the, the side here. Put some big wheels on it, little wheels, the mouse trap up here. Make that rule. Uh, roll, not rule. It would rule, but I meant roll. That would be a cool design too. So this would work for a body as well. I'm not going to use that one today. My favorite and simplest quick way to make a mousetrap car is to use the thin piece of wood here. Nice and light, flat surface, easy to work with, right? And then you could you could build your car based around this structure. So that's what I'm going to do today. Those other materials are there. You design the car you want. That's why they're in the kit. Maybe you could make a... I just had an idea like that we could do. I could connect both of these blinds together since I have two of them and make a longer mousetrap car. So it has a longer wheelbase. That could come in handy if I wanted to, to make my car go really far because I could put the mousetrap up here, have a longer lever arm pulling on those wheels, make the car go further, something you could do. How would I connect these together? Maybe these plastic cubes could come in handy as like a overlap, right? Like I could glue them on both sides like that. That's going to add some mass or weight to the, the car, but maybe that would create some rigidity in the center there so my car wouldn't double as much. Pretty cool designs there. All right, but let's get started with the simple design that we're going to do today on this video. I am going to take the, the blind, like as I said, I am going to figure out how to add some wheels to it. One of the first things that you should do is just try to get your car to roll smoothly, right? Sounds good. Now, we have these paper clips here, too. 
that's something cool you could do with that with the straws as well. I'm just kind of thinking what I want to do to attach my wheels here. Now, one thing that a lot of people do the first time they build their mousetrap car is they they attach the axle. So I'm thinking about using this wood stick as an axle. The straws probably could work as an axle too, right? To turn, turn it part of the way. I'm going to use the wood dowel, right? So one thing that a lot of people do, adults and students alike, the first time that they do their mousetrap car, is they try to glue the axle to the body. And then they attach the wheels to the body, so that way the wheels can spin. So notice in this quick little design I have where I'm holding this together, the, the, the body and the axle are fixed, they're not moving, but the wheel is moving. So that will allow my car to roll, right? Like I could, I could roll, I could roll like this with the wheels like on there and roll with the axle fixed. But then how do I drive the axle, right? That one, I'm pushing the body. But if I had a mousetrap, how would you get that to turn, that system to turn? So that's one of the, the things that people look at um, when they're doing the mousetrap car and that they, I don't want to say screw up on, but they, they kind of work you through, right? It's an option of connection, but it might not work best. Awesome. <clears throat> awesome. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take a piece of straw and I am going to cut a couple little sections out. Make them roughly about the same size here. Roughly about the same size. Now I could, I could make one big long piece along the edge here, but then that would increase material contact and that would create more friction. So I'm going to just create two little plastic straw pieces and I'm actually going to glue those on to the body here. So hopefully my glue is ready to go, nice and hot, and it is, and glue that on there. Push it down really well, give the hot glue some time to dry, try not to get it on your fingers like I always do, try the other one as well, get a little glue on there, Awesome. I guess that's my word today. Awesome. I'm using it a lot. Word of the day. What can I say? Cool. Like I just kind of came up with another word. All right. So as you can see here, I just have two pieces of straw glued onto the body of what I am going to turn into my mousetrap car. Okay. And my idea is that I want to take this dowel and place it through. Look, I have no friction in there. Perfect. So that dowel is going to go through there, and that dowel will be my axle and be able to spin freely, right? So I could attach some wheels on there and move along. I'm actually also going to make this the front of my vehicle. I don't know. I just thought of that right now. To decide which side I want to make the front. Alright, and then you have to decide what wheels you're going to put on there. What wheels are you going to put on? Then looking at the different size of the wheels, and you might ask yourself, does the size of the wheel matter? And the answer is, it depends which wheel it is. Is it going to be the front wheels? Is it going to be the back wheels? Is it the drive wheels? How are you going to make the wheels, right? Uh, for me, I believe that the front wheels, since they're not going to be the drive wheels, 
the size isn't going to matter so much. So I'm gonna add some a little bit of style and I wanna make the front wheels, what color? Let's go with the yellow to offset the, the blue straw, right? And I'm just thinking aesthetics and looks here. And I want to have my wheel put on here. I'm gonna glue it to the axle here. Let's see. Put some glue on there, lots of glue. Make it hold. Right? So yes, I am gluing the wheel to the axle. Now as I do that, I am going to eyeball. I just want to make sure that my axle and my wheel combination is relatively straight. And by straight, I mean I want the axle perpendicular to the wheel. So that way it doesn't turn or do anything funny as it's moving. So as perpendicular as I can try to get it is what I'm doing right now. I can see it's not working too well. Maybe a little bit more glue on this side. All right. Hold in there well. And as that's drawing, and I try to keep that perpendicular, I'm actually going to put it through the body of the car and put my other wheel on the other side. All right. And that's just going to help me hold it up, and then I could play with the, the direction of the wheels and try to keep them straight and as perpendicular as I can there. And then I'm going to glue the other side on as well. Cool. And of course, we just have to let that dry for a little bit. Now, as I was drying, I mentioned earlier that the size of the wheels could matter in the design of the car. And that's because as the mousetrap is pulling on the axle and the wheel turns, if you're trying to make the car go further, then the, the circumference of the wheel is going to make a difference on how far you travel, right? So every revolution of the larger wheel will provide an overall greater linear length. Right? So one revolution of the small wheel will take me a specific distance. I wish I had a marker here with me. Maybe I'll just use this pin. Let's try this. All right, I think that works. If I have this pin here, if I make one complete, and I'll start at this gray spot. I don't know if you can see this on camera. But if I make one full revolution, of the wheel, the small wheel, it took me over to this point. So whatever distance that is, that's the distance it took me. Okay, pull this pin out here, out of here. I'm not cutting it, I'm just trying to get some leverage on it. All right, now let's put that in the big wheel. So remember that the stick here is how far it took for one revolution on the little wheel. Now on the big wheel, all right, that was actually almost a half revolution, right? So one complete revolution took me about double the distance, okay? And I wonder what the circumferences are on there. I don't know the actual measurement, but I wonder if that's twice as big or something, right? So I actually went twice as far, estimating, right? About twice as far with the larger wheel than I did the smaller wheel for one complete revolution of the wheel. So you'll actually get further with bigger drive wheels, which is pretty cool. All right, so you can see here that I have the start of a car, right? And as I talked about earlier about the, just trying to get some of the glue out of here, yucky. All right. 
that I talked about earlier about the axle and body configuration. Notice how my axle can move freely, it could spin, but as it spins, the wheels spin with it. The only thing that is fixed is the body, right? And that's what I would want for the axle to move. Otherwise, you would just have the wheels moving and that would be fixed. It might work for the front wheels, it won't work for the back wheels for sure. So I'm just deciding to do both of them this way. All right, now for the back wheels, I could do the same thing that I did for the front. I could cut the straws out over here, put them underneath, and do it that way. But, or I could put it on the side here, but I need access to, to the, the axle in the back, so that way I could turn the wheels with the mouse strap. So in my design, obviously there's many different ways you could do this, but in the design I'm doing today, I am going to actually use the paper clips as well. I can show you how the paper clips could be used in this kit. I'm going to do very something very similar that I did in the front with the straw, but I am going to offset the paper clip so it overhangs towards the back. Okay. How far off? I don't know. Let's try. I'm trying to keep it measured correctly here. Let's put a little bit of glue on here. All right, let's stick the paper clip in there and hold it up vertically until it dries. All right, I think it's dry enough that it's holding up itself. So I could do the same thing with the next paper clip. I'm going to attach it into the back here. Make sure I want to keep my same direction here. And are these paper clips the same size? Yeah, roughly they are, right? Cool. A little bit more glue on this side. Put this in like that. Again, waiting for it to dry. Trying to wait for it to dry and make sure it doesn't come out. And then what I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to be doing is using the paper clips as the connection points between my vehicle and my axle. I was just trying to make sure I don't think it's very level, so it's not straight. And you can see that in the way the the axle is right now, right? You can see it leaning like that. So I'm actually going to move that down a little bit, which just means I have to re-glue, which is fine. I put some glue on there. I'm going to stick this into the glue. And let's actually put the axle back in there resting so I can find a point where it's relatively horizontal there. Now right there it looks like the axle is relatively horizontal. So I'm going to let it dry in that position. And you can see from there I did the same thing I did in the front that I did in the back but now I have it offset off the edge a little bit which is exactly what I want for my design of a car. And let's just let this glue dry a bit. I have a better connection in there. And I'm just messing with my glue, trying to clean up the glue a little bit. So, all right.
And for the back wheels, because we talked about that whole circumference thing and going further with bigger wheels, I'm just going to make my car with bigger wheels. So I already did like a rough measurement. I put the two lids one into the other, and I can see that the largest wheel here is the paper wheel. And it's somewhat light, so it's not going to be too heavy. So that's the wheel I am going to use. Now, I was trying to see the, the plastic wheels had holes in them already, so it was real easy to stick the axle through and glue them. These don't have holes in there. so I, Well, they do have holes, but not holes that go all the way through or big enough for the, the axle to go through. So I could drill a hole through there and glue it and do the same thing I did in the front wheel. But I, I thought I saw like these pins here. And this is, this is paper, right? So I didn't have too much trouble pushing it through the first time. Let's see if this is long enough to go through the center pin. If I try to find roughly the center. I don't think it's centered. I'm going to try to roughly find the center here without any tools or measuring equipment. I think right there is roughly the center. Okay. So it pokes all the way through. And I'm wondering if I can push the pin into the end of the dowel here without poking myself. And it's kind of hard to do that. I think it's kind of dangerous to do this. I'm probably going to cut myself. I don't know here. Let's see. All right. This wood is kind of tricky to get that pin in. So I don't like this idea too much. I thought it would be a really cool idea just to poke the, the wheel in there. Maybe if I had some sort of hammer or something, I could put, push that down. Up. Oh. I'm going to make like a caveman. I'm going to make a hammer. All right, let's make a hammer real quick, like a caveman. I'm going to put this on the center of the pen coming through the paper. And I'm going to use the, the, the block of wood like a caveman. Okay. And since I was like a caveman, I got caveman results which means the wood split and it kind of spins so I can move the axle and the wheel freely. Not quite the look I was going for, but I, I was able to get the, the, the material to go through. But again, I split the dowel. I don't know if you can see in there the little split in the wood here. So it didn't quite do what I wanted it to do, but that's okay. I could leave it like that, and then let's just put a little bit of glue on there and see how that works. All right, let's turn this back on here. Put a little bit of glue around. So I'm doing a glue method with caveman style of breaking my dowel, splitting the dowel <laughs> with the push pin. Seemed like a good idea when I thought out of it, but I got a small piece of wood. But hopefully that little bit of glue on there will hold it, and it'll spin as one piece like I wanted it to. Okay. I can put that through here on the back now. Okay. So you kind of got an idea how my car is coming together here now, right? Pretty cool. I am going to now do the same thing to the other side. But see, now I can't caveman it on here. I don't think I can. And I don't think I can because I'll be pushing to the side now, and I don't want to wreck anything here. I don't know. And now this side's even smaller because it's the... This side's even smaller because it's the dowel cut side. So caveman style may not be the best way to do this. But let's see if I could just... I have a drill right there. Right, this side I'm probably going to... 
and cheat and just draw a little hole here. Right. Hopefully not too big. And that'll just, oop, it didn't go through all the way. Now we're through it all the way. That'll just help me a little bit here. And just like in the front, glue the wheel to the axle. I just thought of something that would have been really cool with these uh, paper wheels that I have in the back, with these paper lids. They look like a nice blank canvas. So if I have time here at the end, maybe I'll color them or design them. Even the, the body is all, it's like a plain white, right? So I have like a, I have a blank canvas that I can design to my liking. We'll see if I have time after messing with this car. Sometimes when I'm doing these uh, hour live streams, I feel like I'm on one of those competition shows where you're cooking or doing something like that. In a certain amount of time. And you know, you're always rushing. You don't have enough time to do things exactly the way you want them to come out. But you got to put a nice product out there for all the judges to look at. Um, that's why I'm like looking at the clock and saying, what could I do? I could decorate it if I had the time, right? But given the time constraints, what can I come up with? Maybe that's a, a, a show that we could do too at 2-Bit Circus Foundation. Maybe we'll get a couple people together from the foundation in one video. And we can do a, a makerspace do-off, right? Like... Give us each an hour to complete the same task and see who does it, and then have a panel of judges. That would be pretty cool. I just think I found a new idea for us. All right, let me get some water really quick. Thank you. All right. So now the idea here is that I have the mouse trap. I remember I said the, the small wheels were going to be the front of the car. And the large wheels were going to be the back because those were going to be the drive wheels. So it's going to be a rear wheel drive car. So I want to put the mouse trap as far forward as I can on the car to try to maximize the distance away from it, right? But that's also going to be dependent on the size of the lever that I can create to pull that string over. And so I have a third dowel here, and this is the only size that I have. So how might I increase the length of that? I was eyeballing these, these chips here, these plastic chips, and wondering if there's something I could do with that. That would be kind of cool. I'm going to experiment and do something. See if how long I can make that stick. Oh, but I also have a certain amount of string. I have plenty of string. All right. Worried I didn't have enough string for the idea I was going to do. But I have quite a bit here. As long as I don't get it in a knot. Too big of a knot here. Okay. Awesome. Got my knot out of my string. Great. So I'm going to try to discover different ways that I can lengthen the arm here with the materials that I have. The first thing that came to mind are these chips, these plastic chips. It's just going to add a little bit of length, but it has a nice flat, nice flat surface that I can attach to the entire bar of the snapping part of the mousetrap, right? So you can see it's not much, but maybe like an inch or inch and a half I've extended that bar. So maybe it's more work than it's worth, but let's try it. And then out of all the materials I have here to hold things together, I think I'm just going to duct tape it, right? I don't, know, I don't know about you, but as an engineer, my favorite weapon is the duct tape. It's versatile for a lot of different things. All right. 
Let's see if I can be neat with this. Get that where I want it to go. Get that tape on there. All right, I got a piece of duct tape on there. Now I'm just going to put one the other way for some rigidity in there. I saw the duct tape with my supplies, and I didn't know what I was going to use it for today, but I was like, eh, I better take duct tape with me. And right about now, I am really happy I brought duct tape. Because I think regular tape just wouldn't have worked for what I'm thinking about doing here. Okay, cool. Adds a little bit of rigidity there, cool. And then I wanna actually make the, the bar even longer. So I have the stick I wanna add. And while we're at it with this duct tape, why not use a little bit more duct tape? Now again, regular tape would probably do the trick too. But the duct tape is here and it is really strong. Hot glue may have done the trick too. I know I used to, uh, I've done something like this where I've lashed. I don't know if any of you know what lashing is, but you use a little piece of string and you could tie the, the wood stick to the bar of the mousetrap by lashing the two sticks together. So if you don't know how to lash things together, that's another technique you could learn to do. Well, I'm really liking how this is looking, right? Like you can see how easy it is for me to move the mousetrap back and forth now. Over time, that I am putting some pressure on that tape. So I might have to just stick that down once or twice again. But it's working, it's working, it's doing what I want it to do. Perfect. Okay. Looking at that time, 15 minutes to the judges. All right. A little bit more glue. I'm going to glue the mouse trap to the, uh, the car here. I'm kind of running out of glue on this glue stick. I don't want to run off camera. So let's see if I can push enough glue out here. Not a lot, but let's see if it holds it. Nope, yep, that glue's not going to hold. I need more hot glue. I am going to slip off camera for just a second to get another glue stick. I apologize, but I'm not going very far. Actually, just right off camera here. And I am back. Let's swap out glue guns here. Now, while this glue gun is getting hot, in the interest of time here, right? We're on a time crunch. <clears throat> I'm gonna use some of these rubber bands and what I'm going to do is put them around the back wheels. There are two size rubber bands in there, one with a larger rubber band. I just put that around the wheel. That, that's going to give it a little bit of traction as it's moving, right? Like a tire. And let's do that to the other side. Now, if you want if you were working at home and doing this, you could use other materials if you like, but 
I think the, the kit is sufficient to get it done and still have enough creativity, right? There's many different approaches you could have taken with this mousetrap car. Uh, this is just uh, the one I'm taking, but again, you could have used any of the other materials in this kit. And I'm not going to use all of them to get the, the car done. I tried to use a little bit of everything in the kit on this car, but pick and choose what you like here. Uh -oh. All right, so all I'm waiting for now is this hot glue, well, this glue gun to get hot, so that way I can glue the mouse trap down to the car body, and then we're going to find a way to attach the string from the top here of the mouse trap contraption to the rear axle to get it to turn. And if everything works magically on the first time, and we get motion, the project is done. You could design it any way you want. And I'm still looking at that time crunch here. I really like that idea of a game show. Maybe we should do that one day. We'll have to get the rest of the team on here. We'll get Kate. Maybe Dr. Dejana. And we will have a build off challenge. All right, let's see. All right, so that's on there now. Got to give it some time to dry. As that's drying, let's start measuring out our string here and seeing what the best way to attach this is. Now, if I had time here, I would like to cut like a little slit into the, the string to make sure I have a nice surface for it to hold on to. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a knot around it. It probably could slide up and down, which is a bad thing. I don't want it to do that. I'll put a little bit of hot glue on there to try to hold the string in place at the top here. And then because there's no method to my madness here, I think I'm going to go ahead and duct tape it as well. Why not? Let's over engineer holding the string in place. I don't know. I always have to touch the glue to see if it's dry. I don't know why. I have a lot of string here. I don't even need this one. Look, I could have made a way bigger mousetrap car and made it go way further by using more string. But I'll just cut it right here. I think that should be enough to showcase what we're doing. So we have extra string, which is good if you want to make a larger size car, longer, like I said, to get that, that longer motion, that further motion, you could be able to do that. All right, let's see. Ho hopefully everything holds together as I pull this back. Awesome. Everything looks like it's holding together. So I think we'll be good. All right. I'm going to say awesome just because I've said it so many times today. Okay. Again, I just tied a knot around here. What I'm trying to do is create a surface or a good connection that will allow me to roll roll the back axle and wind the string. I have excess string here I'm going to cut. Okay. So let's see. As this rolls, it's going to pull. If I have enough friction in there, it's going to pull. I want to make sure there's enough friction on this back axle between the string that I can get some rotation. That's coming off. I don't want that to come off. Let's just glue that for a bit. Sometimes you don't want to glue the string on the back axle. If you want it to go further, you don't want to do that. 
because uh, by doing that, it's going to actually jerk it and act as a break when it gets to the end of the string. So um, if you're going for distance, don't glue the string to the back axle. You want to let it freely flow. And that way, as it launches, that way, as it launches, the, the string will just come free. Your axle will continue spinning. And you'll, you'll keep that inertia going until it comes to a stop by some other means. But you won't be a, actively applying a brake to it. All right. So let's just see really quickly if we get any motion out of this system here. Three, two, one. Look, we did, but something happened here. Too much pressure on that back. Oh, okay. My paper clip somehow got jammed up there. That's not what I wanted to do. I wasn't expecting that. Three, two, one. Oh no, now my axle's coming apart. Three, two, one. Uh-oh, problem. Didn't work the first time. That's okay. The car is working though, but something happened to my connection here. So the back axle, the glue here that was holding the, the paper clip came undone. So a weak joint is responsible for the problem. Well, let's see if I can find a way to make that joint stronger on this side. Put some hot glue. And what I did this time is I put the paper clip around the, the piece of wood. Okay, now the other side's coming off too. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so I have to redo this back axle. It's coming apart. No big deal. Part of the engineering process here. Okay. So I'm just lowering it, moving it closer to the body. That's going to allow me to put more hot glue into that area. And again, this is just one of those things that you under time crunch, right? You just want to let the glue dry properly. Make sure it doesn't come off. Take your time and be patient. One of those things that I don't have a lot of right now on the time crunch, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Put some glue on the other side because actually both sides came off with the pressure from the From the mousetrap pulling on there. Okay. And I already have a plan B here. If this glue doesn't hold this time for this particular design on the time constraint, I'm going to wrap some duct tape in there, hold it nice and firm to that body because that's the joint that was coming loose. Okay. So I'm probably going to do that regardless, even if I do get this to hold well. Put some duct tape through there, okay? Now again, this isn't a problem with the design necessarily. It's just trying to find a way to hold that, those paper clips on there good. Now, if I had more time, what I would do is I would cut like a little hole in the wood and I would put the, the paper clip in there to create more surface space that the paper clip is in contact with. I think that would be a, a, one of my ideas that I would do to, to figure that out. Maybe if the paper clip design didn't work, I would then move on to trying to look at something with those straws, right? Okay. I'm having trouble with my duct tape sticking to my finger. 
not what I want it to be sticking to on the car. Alright, let's try this again. Take all this tape and glue off of here. I'm glad I brought the duct tape today, huh? Helping me out a lot, I think. Alright, new paste the duct tape. Try not to get it stuck to myself again today. Again, duct tape might not be the best or the only way to connect it, but it is a way to connect it. Oop. Now I, I kind of screwed myself up again. <laughs> I got the duct tape to stick now, but I wasn't paying attention to where the axle was, and I duct taped my paper clip too close to the body. I know, it's kind of hard to see, guys. I'm, I'm so sorry about this right now. Let's try this again. Right, so now I have that connected there, it's kind of, kind of connected there. I'm just worried now if I put the tension on here again, it's going to pop it off or make it twist or do something weird. So let's see what I could do to fix this. Uh, I pull this tighter here. think that might do the trick. Let's hope, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I see all of you out there in virtual space, past, uh, present, and future, cheering me on and having your fingers crossed. Now that's going to make me go backwards, so let's wrap the string around this way. <laughs> My dog is crying because he is outside right now. And he wanted to see what was happening with our mousetrap car. All right, let's see if we get any motion in here. I'm not wrapping it around all the way because I don't even have that much room for it to roll, if it rolls. So let's just kind of see where it's going to go. See if we have motion. Three, two, one. Okay, it's working. Working, working, working. The side that's giving me issues now is the side that didn't duct tape this side right here. Okay, twisting on that axle too much. Let's see if I center that more. It's going, it's going. For a, a quick hour mousetrap build, that's not too bad. Okay. We just got to make sure that that mousetrap pulls on there. Okay. What happened now? All right, there we go. We're moving. We are moving. There's a couple little things that need tweaking, right? 
So one is the, the, back, the, the back part right here. It, it needs a little bit of tweaking. What's happening is the axle is twisting and it's acting like a little brake when it hits there, right? So that, that would be an, an easy somewhat fix. The next thing that I notice is happening um, and it's probably the location of the bar here, right? I have this bar off to the side somewhat. And so when the string is pulling, it's pulling like at an angle, which could be part of the problem in the back here. So a remedy of that would be to move the, the bar here to the side. I would still have to go back here to fix this, this back axle part. Let's wrap this around. See, I just moved that bar in the front over a little bit. And maybe that'll be enough. I know I'm over time. If this was a game show, I'd be in a lot of trouble right now. Huh? All right. So let's try this again. Three, two, one. There we go. That's, that's working a lot better. Again, that, that back part still needs to be fixed. But for an hour mousetrap car, I am pretty happy with that. Pretty good. You see that? Uh, of course, like I have a couple more design iterations. I see separation here with that stick. So I'd want a way to hold that stick better. That back axle needs to be turned and fixed. The car is moving. I have liftoff. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me today. The, the car works an hour build time for such a, a, a rigorous project. I think it's not too shabby what we came up with. Obviously, I wouldn't be done with this. I would want my car to go as far as I could get it to go, which means that I would be doing some more engineering tweaking. I'd be playing with the spacing in this back axle and the way that it was twisting. I would change the location of the bar there. There's a bunch of little modifications that I would make. Uh, but the idea is here, right? We had motion, it worked, and it would continue to work. With those minor fixes, it would work even better. So again, for an hour project, getting that done really quickly, I think the task at hand is accomplished. Uh, check out our mousetrap car kits. They are meant not to be a one and done kit. Like you don't open it up and there's instructions there on how to build the kit. You open it up, you look at the materials, and you try to find the best way that you could design a mousetrap car given the materials. It is an engineering challenge, right? So you have those criteria and your constraints are the materials in the kit. Uh, you could use, obviously, glues, tools, and stuff like that. You need to get it done. But that is part of the fun and the project to see who can build the the best, the most efficient mousetrap car, the fastest, the furthest, whatever the challenge is. Would my design be completely different if I was going uphill? Absolutely. My torque arms, size of the wheels would change, all of that. But that is part of the challenge that we have with this kit. So again, thank you for joining us today. Mousetrap car, our project worked awesome. Take care and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye everyone.